Treating depression with medications can be dangerous. There are often many unwanted side effects, and most antidepressants don't work any better than a placebo, according to many studies. Right, and when do they ever treat the cause for the depression? Because it's not the neurotransmitters that are causing about 95% of the problem. It's the problems that cause depression that upset the neurotransmitters, and we focus on the wrong thing. We should be trying to solve the problem. And now a new study has come out showing that there may be a link to arteriosclerosis in the coronary arteries leading to heart attacks from depression and taking antidepressants such as Zoloft. It's amazing. All the SSRIs, Vicki, are probably ones that put you at risk for developing heart attacks. You know, so depression alone and long-term treatment for it with an SSRI antidepressant can promote life-threatening coronary artery disease. And you know, there was a study that came out not too long ago. A few years ago, it talked about carotid artery stenosis, yeah. and thickening of the carotid arteries. Now, that doesn't necessarily, doesn't necessarily mean you'll have a stroke, but it does mean that there's something going on there that is the precursor of what usually causes a stroke. So we've got some bad information here that is making antidepressants look even worse than they have been looking for the last 10 years in my research. I'm wondering why we need, so many people need antidepressants. Well, it's the way medicine works. I mean, what's happened in healthcare today? We're looking at a system in healthcare that's more about treating symptoms than it is solving the problem. I mean, doctors now work for big corporations. They're told what to do. The job is to get people back on their feet and back to work with as little cost as possible. And antidepressants can do the trick, even if they work just as a placebo. They do do that. The problem is, is they never treat the underlying cause unless you're looking at severe depression or people who have things like manic depressive psychosis or uh, something that, that's that wild. So maybe here we should talk a little bit about some things that people can do that are natural to help their depression rather than having to resort to these drugs. Absolutely. Let's do the things that are the most sensible. Why not do psychotherapy and try and find out what it is that's depressed you? Why have you lost hope? Why can't you sleep? Or do you sleep too much? Uh, why don't we try exercise? Wonderful way to manage depression. And getting out in nature and, and being with our friends. Well, Talking to friends is helpful, too. Yeah, there were some wonderful studies at Duke University maybe 10, 15 years ago that showed that actually exercise worked better than antidepressants over the long haul. It was equal in mild to moderate depression uh, to the antidepressants, and it didn't have all these side effects. I think also even, you know, like working on your attitude and, f and forgiveness. There are a lot of things that psychotherapy can do. And then there's some new things on the horizon that are kind of interesting. They're using pulsed electromagnetic fields now at a lot of major universities for people who have depression. I think it's the kind of thing that may replace something like electroshock therapy, which is just barbaric and does such terrible things to people, even though over the long haul they seem to do better with it. But the pulse electromagnetic fields really are encouraging, and I've started using... There aren't using any downsides to that, are there? Well, not that we know of. I mean, it may not work. That's the biggest downside, but I don't, I don't know of any downsides. But how wonderful when it does work. I mean, when you were talking about electric shock therapy, I was talking to somebody recently who's had that, and she says that her memory is shot. She couldn't remember how much dog food to put in the dog bowl. That's how it got. And it's not like everybody turns out like that, and I don't want to say there's not a place for electroshock therapy. I'm sure there is. It's just that this is another way that's a lot less invasive and, and does the same thing. And it's well, maybe not, we it's should not so explain, expensive either. Explain what it is. It's like a, a tube. Well, it's an electromagnetic field. It works like an MRI. And the magnetic field is very powerful and causes changes, a lot of which you don't understand, but some of which we do. We know that pulse electromagnetic fields cause a uh, increase in circulation. They tend to promote healing. What they do to the brain at the deepest level is probably mostly theoretical. So when we're looking at depression, the first thing that should come to mind is, is how to solve the problem. I mean, why are we depressed and hopeless? And, and what can we do to change that? And, a lot, and almost always, it's something that can be dealt with by going back through life stories and trying to figure out what went wrong and try to find ways to help people with the challenges that they face that they haven't been able to resolve to work on forgiveness, which is a big one. And, uh, and if necessary, from time to time, if it's really a severe depression, maybe there's a place for an antidepressant or for more aggressive therapy. 
But otherwise, I think we should stick away from these drugs that are no more than placebos most of the time and have way too many side effects.